them piss heads Hola, bienvenido. Welcome to Andale Burrito. I'm Sean. Andale Burrito is Spokane's newest breakfast convenience. We're all about breakfast burritos. Breakfast on the go, and we're getting a satisfying meal. You can find us located on Hamilton, next to McDonald's, and in great proximity to Gonzaga University. We're currently looking to hire employees, so let us tell you a little bit more about Andale Burrito, starting with our vision and mission statements. Andale, Brooke and Evan. Okay, so our mission statement is that we hope to strengthen connections to Gonzaga University and other local colleges and universities that house our targeted market. Andale Brito aims to be the contributing member not only to the college environment, Spokane food community, but an active part in the whole community by offering healthier options for breakfast on the go, as well as increasing the sustainability of the fast food industry. Andale Brito aims to create a family atmosphere that fosters growth and connection between all of our employees. So this is the SWOT analysis for Andale. Um, some of our strengths include the fact that we um, we think of ourselves as an affective business. Um, we're, we're kind of a we want our fan our uh, company to kind of have this family work culture. Um, we want our employees to be excited to, to come into work because they have this this second home, um, and we think that that's going to help their their um, uh, ability to work and, and actually work uh, become better workers within the work working environment. Um, we're also a small business uh, storefront, um, and so maintenance costs and um, stuff that's you know running running the business will be relatively low uh, because we're only one one store one restaurant right now, um, so that'll be that's good. Uh, we're also uh, we model our, our company off of the differentiation theory. Um, we're different now. We're different than everybody else. Um, we're the only breakfast um, burrito delivery company. Um, in Spokane, um, and we deliver fast. So that makes us different from everybody else that doesn't deliver or doesn't serve solely breakfast. Um, some of our weaknesses include, um, or could include, uh, time management, um, keeping the food hot, uh, getting the deliveries on time within our, our guaranteed time, um, and also having quick service um, is very, very important to the success of our business. And if we don't do that successfully, our, our business could, um, could be in trouble. Um, because we kind of model our, our burritos off of the fact that we want them to be healthy, um, costs of the food will be rel will be a little bit higher than, than most, um, and we'll, and that will in turn uh, cause the burritos to be a little bit more expensive. Because they're higher quality, we can we, we need to make them a little bit more expensive because it costs our business a little bit more to to make those burritos. Um, and we also, because we, we're uh, a, a small business, um, we have one, and we're in the fast food industry, and a lot of our jobs are part time. Um, turnover could be relatively high. Uh, we're hoping that it's not, and that's kind of where we're getting at um, when we when we want our, our our business to kind of have a family culture. Is that we we, we don't want people to leave. We want people to, to stay throughout the entire year and then even come back, um, and that's what we hope. But be, we we recognize that the, we recognize the market. Um, and we know that you know, it's, it, there's a possibility for a fairly high turnover. Some of our main threats are that there are other fast food um, delivery services in the area, not necessarily for breakfast, but they do offer a cheaper option like McDonald's, and that can really hurt our business. And also sit down breakfast places. On the weekends, I know some people like to go out to breakfast and sit down and make it an actual event rather than just going through the drive-thru or getting it delivered to your house. So that is another effect to our business. And the unstable food costs of organic and natural foods can be a big threat to us as cost-wise. And since we do want to keep our costs down by offering that small storefront, just no sit-down place, it can really harm that as one of our threats. Hi, I'm Katie and I'm here to give you an overall description of our central job, the delivery server or driver. The job Andale Burrito can't do business without is our delivery server. As a delivery server, you can be expected to be responsible for each delivery you are sent out on, 
customer satisfaction with that delivery and the day-to-day -day storefront operations when you're not out on delivery plus time management of yourself. At Andalay, we pride ourselves in efficiency when getting the food to the customer. This job requires a high school degree, a valid driver's license, and a clean driving record. The job design we chose for our central job is a perceptual motor design. We mean to break up the job as a delivery driver and as a server. As a delivery driver, your focus is on efficiency and safety when delivering burritos. As a server, you work on your interpersonal communication with the customer and the overall customer satisfaction. Servers focus on communication with customers as well as customer satisfaction. Next, Sean is going to tell you who we are recruiting for this position. On delay, Sean. Who will we want to fill this position? For this position, we will target college students at Gonzaga, Eastern Washington, and Whitworth Universities. The part-time nature of this position, in addition to the early morning hours, should make this job especially desirable to college students looking to work before class. Because times of high demand will fluctuate throughout the day, we will not look to fill full-time positions. What is the supply and demand outlook for this position? The demand for this position from Andalay's perspective is high as we need to fill eight delivery positions. The supply should also be fairly high though because this position requires relatively little skill and almost anyone can effectively do the job. We do not believe the part-time nature of this job will have a dramatic impact on supply because we are targeting people with schedules that only allow for part-time work. How will we recruit? To recruit, we will look to the university job boards and advertise this position on Craigslist as well. This allows us to advertise to our targeted college student employees it also allows us to advertise the position to other members of the community who may be qualified to do the job. For us, the resources committed is fairly minimal, but we believe these methods will generate the results that we need to fill the positions. Some of our main opportunities include being able to expand to other colleges and universities around the area. And with that, we can use Bulldog Bucks as, as another opportunity to give Gonzaga students another option to buy this meal. And with a food truck as an opportunity, we can cater events like Bloomsday and Hoop Fest that attract hundreds of people to the Spokane area in the summertime. Also, since we want to be a sustainable company, we are offering the opportunity of bikes and maybe composting unused foods to help our company be known as green and economic. To help our company be known as being green and environmentally friendly. Our main threat threats are that other fast food restaurants that do serve breakfast, although some don't deliver, they still do drive throughs like McDonald's and they are cheaper options. Um, sit down breakfasts are also another threat to us because some people like to go down to breakfast and on the weekend. On some of our main threats are that the other fast food. It some of our main threat. <laughs> some of our main threats are that there are other fast food um, delivery services in the area, not necessarily for breakfast but they do offer a cheaper option like McDonald's and that can really hurt our business. And also sit down breakfast places. On the weekends I know some people like to go out to breakfast and sit down and make it an actual event rather than just going through the drive through or getting it delivered to your house. So that is another effect to our business. And the unstable food costs of organic and natural foods can be a big threat to us as cost-wise, and since we do want to keep our costs down by offering that small storefront, just no sit-down place, it can really harm that as one of our threats. All right, so I'm David, and I'm going to be talking about motivation and compensation for, and benefits for uh, Andale. Um According to ONET, the uh, typical uh, rate, hourly rate wage for a deliverer is $10 an hour, so that's what we're going to pay our deliverers. So the first benefit that we're going to offer our drivers is we're going to compensate them for the gas that they use uh, during deliveries. 
Um, each driver will be given an odometer to keep track of their mileage. Um, they will start uh, at the they will start the odometer at the beginning of their their delivery uh, and stop it once they return back to Andale. Uh, we'll have the odometer set up to a central computer within the store uh, that will track how many miles each driver has driven. Uh, according to the IRS, the current uh, standard mileage rate for business drip for business business miles driven is 57.5 cents per mile. So for each mile that the driver drives, we will pay them an extra 57 cents uh, that will be added onto their monthly paycheck uh, to compensate for the gas that they use. Um, another, because we're a, uh, we, we want to promote sustainability, um, we give our deliverers the option to drive, to ride bikes uh, to deliver their, uh, their burritos rather than use cars. Um, we know that in a bit it's better in, a, in a, a city setting, but in the Logan neighborhood where blocks are rather simple and easy to travel, we think that and easy to navigate. We think believe that being using bikes will make things um, make some deliveries easier uh, than using a car. Um, it also promotes a slight fitness atmosphere within our business. Um, and each time they ride their bike, the deliverers will be compensated. Uh, we figured that rather that we'll, we'll pay them an extra 57 cents um, each time they ride their bike. So rather than um, compensating them for money that is spent um, while driving and using gas, they will receive an extra benefit of 57 cents per, per um, delivery they make while riding a bike. Um, on top of this benefit, we'll also add their name to a raffle every time that the, they ride their bike. And at the end of each month, um, we're going to draw. We'll draw from the raffle, and uh, whoever his name is driven is drawn. They will win something like a gift card or or a similar a similar um, uh, compensation or benefit. That uh, and we'll try and change it around um, each month to make sure that it stays interesting. Um, our, our another benefit that uh, this job is going to offer is some sort of uh, job security. Um, because we are building a business around the idea that we're, we're an affective business and we want our employees to feel like they're, they're working at a home when they're working for us, um, anybody who works for us and performs at an above average level will be given the opportunity to return to that job when they come back. Uh, for example, if a student uh, works over the, throughout the year but goes home for the summer, they, worked at a, uh, at a, they were a very good worker um, and they did their job well, that job will be off, will be there for them if they want it when they return back the next year. Uh, the same goes for those who work over the summer. Um, we hope that uh, by doing this, it will motivate workers to uh, to want to um, to to strive to reach that that ability or uh, sorry that that um, that job security, uh, while at the same time giving them something like a family to look forward to being reunited with when they return. Four Four Locos was a horrible idea. I need food and fast. Wow, that was fast. Um, so for our motivational theory, um, we, we said we want to use is we also want to use the goal setting theory. Um, each employee will be required uh, to submit a set of goals for themselves um, at the beginning of their employment. Um, as as a company, we want to push them to to not only set goals for the company but also set goals for themselves. And if we're able to 
um, align these, these personal goals that they have um, with the business goals, then we've achieved this, this uh, line of sight that um, is so important to, to businesses and their success as well as employee motivation and, and happiness um, within the, the work setting. Um, at, the, uh, at the beginning of their employment, they will meet with the manager to discuss their goals. Um, most likely the manager will have to modify or critique the goals in a way to make sure that not only are the goals attainable, but they're also challenging and, and will push the worker to, to want to, to work harder and improve themselves in the workplace. Um, each employee will also have follow-up meetings um, every month uh, with the manager to discuss um, each goal or, or different goals and see how they're, how they're coming along, if they've met any or if they need to work harder um, and uh, upon, you know, if they, once they reach a goal, they will, um, will try and create a new goal to kind of fill that, that space so that they keep having goals that they need to keep working for. Um, once a goal has been met, which will usually be based off of a monthly goal or, or even a yearly goal, uh, the employee will receive a goal star. Um, at the end of each fiscal year, which will usually be around Christmas, we're going to have a party. Um, and at the party, a winner will be chosen based off of the number of goal stars they received, as well as the difficulty of the goals um, that were reached. Um, the winner will be determined by the manager and the owner, and that employee will receive a paid weekend getaway to a local resort, such as Schweitzer, or a resort up around um, the Priest Lake area. Um, we won't pay for airfare, but we will pay for the housing, the food, um, and any fun, kind of fun uh, things they would like to do, such as around Christmas time, um, going um, to a ski resort and skiing for a weekend, um, and that's how we'll uh, how we'll motivate our, our our employees to to want to reach those goals. That was our motivational and uh, compensational theories for Andalay. Um, now we're going to hear about training and development from Brooke. So Andalay, Brooke. Thanks, David. I'm going to talk a little bit about training and development. Efficient, quality, and friendly delivery is at the heart of Andalay. We believe the best way to achieve this is through proper training. And as a company, we will put as much time and energy needed to make sure our deliverers are the best in the industry. Upon getting hired, all Andalay employees will have an orientation to learn about the company, policies, and procedures. This includes learning our vision and mission statement. At Andalay, we aim to foster a family atmosphere where all employees support and encourage one another. During orientation, it will be crucial for all employees to understand this mission and be committed to living it out while working for Andalay. This orientation will also include a review of company policies, including complying with the dress code, filling out timesheets and schedules, and other job-related requirements. The second part of orientation will be hands-on training um, for delivery-related practices. To ensure that we're effective in our training, all delivery employees will have the opportunity to complete a pretest of the core job functions. These include being able to properly package a burrito in the bag to ensure that they stay warm on their way to the house, learning the menu items and what's inside each of our burritos, better understanding the Logan neighborhood and the quickest routes around town, learning how to greet a customer at the door, as well as learning how to respond to a customer complaint if they complain when they deliver the burrito, and also learning how to properly collect money give change, and manage receipts. This pretest will be done both in a written assessment form along with the hands-on practice with the functions related to customer service and handling the burritos. If an employee successfully completes this assessment, then there'll be no further training at the time of employment. If an employee does not, they will go through a series of hands-on training and ride-alongs to see firsthand how this process is done. After training, they will receive the same assessment and it is required that they pass that before they begin their job. Throughout their time at Andalay, deliverers will be given constant feedback, both positive and constructive, about how they're performing. These will be given in the form of monthly appraisals, along with informal feedback given by their managers. By continually evaluating our employees and giving on-spot rewards, as David discussed, we will hope that our deliverers will feel supported and encouraged to do their best work. Once our employees are trained for their specific job, we will turn our focus to developing group cohesion and strong communication in the work environment. At Andalay, we like to call this family training, and it highlights our mission as a company. We will have monthly activities for employees outside of work, 
which may include activities such as group lunches, bowling nights, or even a softball team for our company. At its core, these activities will serve as a way to bring all of our employees together and foster the family environment we strive for. Strong communication between our deliverers and our cooks is also crucial for success, and we'll focus on developing those communication skills through team building exercises and activities at our monthly events. With strong communication and strong relationships, Andale will fulfill its mission and develop not just the most deli delicious breakfast burrito around, but also the strongest fast food family in town. Interested on how we specifically measure performance post initial training? Andale, Evan. Hi, my name is Evan. And here at Andalay, performance is of the utmost importance. With time and efficiency being some of our top values, we expect our drivers to gradually perform better over time through objectives and results. That being said, our performance management will be taking a results approach, measuring our goals achieved through a work process. Just as David said, our goals will be based on sustainability, so the optional bike ride during seasonal times through the spring, summer, and fall, instead of using gas, will be much better for the environment and save us money in the long run. Also, the way the Logan is structured, a bike ride is also time efficient with the correct bike routes. We feel that these measures are of the fairest methods of analyzing their performance due to information being concrete, highly viable, and reliable. At Andale, we will be analyzing employee performance by the management by objectives method. This is a three-step process. Step one is setting individual objectives, which in our case is setting the highest goal of bike rides per month and in a specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time-based fashion. Step two is giving feedback and evaluation of their performance. So we will be having drivers evaluate and critique themselves first by asking about their strengths and weaknesses and then conducting a dialogue with the manager. The last step is rewarding performance for those drivers who have committed and met their objectives. And now, for the formal evaluation performance interview, how that will be conducted is we will make sure we use coaching conversations with our employees, which should always be taking place due to Andale fostering a family environment. Now, Andale and Marta. Here at Andale, we want our company to not only be a workplace, but to also be a community. Because of this attitude, we will maintain high levels of job satisfaction by making sure our values align with those of our employees. As it was stated earlier, we want On The Way to be a place where people come to work, but they also come to see their friends through the company. Instead of just coming to work to just get it over with, our employees will always want to improve themselves and the environment around them by having the same values that our company stands for. Because of these values that On The Way has, we will foster just one of the three organizational commitments. But just to recap, these three are effective, where the employee wants to stay, normative, where the employee has an obligation to the company, and continuance, where the employee has the need to stay with the organization. We will foster effective organizational commitment by hiring people with the values that align with those of the company, and by creating activities that are catered to those people with similar interests. This is also how our compensation rewards programs come into play that David had just mentioned. Our delivery driver will want to stay at this company because of the rewards we give them when they do their work in an efficient manner. But it isn't seen as trying to be efficient to the employees. It is about having fun. Since most of the drivers will be young adults, we will want them to have fun while delivering food to cease the boredom that they might have. And this can be done through the rewarding than for the most efficient delivery. As I will mention in a few minutes, our employee will be terminated immediately if they are guilty of gross negligence or serious misconduct. Harassment, theft, and destruction of company property will also result in termination. However, in order to foster perceptions of procedural justice, 
Management will use the following procedures before and during the termination of the employee. When dealing with a problem employee, management should first acknowledge whether or not the employee needs counseling. If they do not, then you may move on to the coaching method, and then you can discipline if it is deemed necessary. To create a fair and just approach to disciplining an employee, we have decided to use the just cause test as our first approach. This test has seven parts, and before moving on to the next step, you must be sure that you have passed the previous test. To begin, the first test that must be taken asks the question if the employee was given any knowledge before if that action or behavior was prohibited. If the employee had no idea what they were doing was unacceptable, the employee should be better informed, which is taken care of by management. However, if the employee knew through an employee handbook or another useful tool given to them, you may move on to the second test. This test wants to find out if the company rule is reasonable. And to determine this, we will look at the orderly, efficient, and safe operations. We also need to look at if the employee should be expected to act in a certain way in order to follow that rule. This test is met if the rule is reasonable and if it was expected of the employee to act a certain way. Test three asks the supervisor to figure out what happened and why. If they find out that there is reasonable evidence that the employee did violate the rules, then test three is met. Test four has us find out if the investigation of the employee was conducted in a fair manner. This asks the supervisor if they used facts, figures, and knowledge of the events in their investigation, or if they have just used the emotional reaction they have towards that employee. If they used facts, then we can move on to test five. And this test states that we must have substantial evidence or proof that the employee is guilty of committing this infraction. If we have substantial evidence or proof, then we have met this test. And that leads us to the sixth test, which states that if the supervisor has applied its rules, orders, and penalties even-handedly among all employees, then you can discipline. However, that doesn't mean that the company has to punish every person in the same exact way that have committed the same exact infraction. This is what we will find out in the seventh test. And the seventh, te seventh test tells us that we are able to punish people differently for the same offense based on their past history. The discipline has to be related to the seriousness of the infraction, but when dealing with someone who has committed many infractions in the past versus someone who has never gotten in trouble, managers are given leeway to provide different punishments to those separate employees. This set of tests allows management to take a step back and to make sure that the employee is being disciplined for something that should be disciplined. To make sure that the manager is not making evidence up or taking advantage of their power, the evidence of the employee will be reviewed by another organizational manager, it's like someone in HR. This manager will use the OUCH test to make sure that the employee's supervisor made an objective decision and not because of an emotional reaction or a gut feeling of that employee. So we want to thank you, uh, Venture Incorporated, for hearing our pitch. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time uh, to listen to uh, what, we, what we think would be a really um, good idea for the, the Spokane area, and the, the, particularly the Gonzaga area. Uh, we want to stress one more time that just in places like, college, like a college campus, we think that this business will thrive. Uh, burritos are in, and the fact that we deliver um, and, and offer late night is also um, very, uh, we think, will we'll really do well with the, the Gonzaga University as well as the surrounding Logan neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, just to kind of finish off our, our presentation, we want to show you um, our menu, um, and that'll pop up in just a sec, but um, until we meet again, we hope that in the future we'll, uh, we'll be able to work with you in starting this, this business on the lake. Thank you. On the way, on the way, on the way to On the Way Burrito.